And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to open a Cabernet Sauvignon that was highly recommended to me from Trish at Wine Store and uh, from a couple other people there, Wine Store at Blakeney. Uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to check it out tonight. We're also going to try and pair it with some interesting foods that I have here. I have. Uh, uh, T-bone steak and uh, a couple other items here. That we're going to try it and see how well it pairs with. So it'll be interesting to see what this wine tastes like. Uh, it was it was recommended to me, but uh, I haven't really uh, opened it up yet. So we'll, we'll, we're going to do that tonight, and we're going to try it out together. Uh, of course, if you're joining uh, me just now for the first time, this is, of course, a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have show notes here, but I don't always follow them 100%. And uh, sometimes we have some fun. We open up a bottle of wine, taste it, review it, toast some birthdays and anniversaries, national days, and just have a good time. Just kick back and relax. That's what this show is all about. Of course, you can uh, watch us live. You can in the chat. You can join in the chat, of course. Watch live at Facebook. And on the Facebook page, Drink with Rick. You can uh, also catch us live on YouTube. We're streaming live right now on YouTube uh, at Drink with Rick on YouTube. And we're also on Twitch. If you are happen, if you happen to be on Twitch, we have a few people that uh, uh, chat with us on Twitch from time to time. And uh, that's at twitch.tv. And, of course, Periscope. Uh, we are live on Periscope. You can tweet me. Uh, you can actually watch this live on my Twitter feed at Drink with Rick at Drink with Rick, and you can respond as well. I'll check the the tweets there and we'll respond to you live on those tweets. Now we're also on DrinkWithRick.com uh, at that's at DrinkWithRick.com. So the website down below. Now I, I, we don't have a chat live chat going there, but you can uh, comment uh, in the comments below the video. If you go directly to the actual page, the post page, where the um, show is going on live. And, of course, you can always catch me at rick at savoyamedia.com uh, after the show, before and between the show. Just uh, send your comments to me, rick at savoyamedia.com. I'd love to hear what you have to say, whether or not you have a recommendation for wine to drink or uh, any feedback, positive or negative. We have some feedback tonight, as a matter of fact, that I'm going to read later on. Some YouTube feedback should be very interesting. Um, I, I, I do appreciate the feedback always, whether it's negative or positive or neutral in between. I, I, I take it all. I accept it all. I'll take the feedback. No problem. And um, let's see. Podcast. If you uh, don't want to watch or if you're, you're traveling or on the road or somewhere uh, uh, out and about, you can uh, catch the podcast audio only, but you can catch the podcast at drinkwithrick.com and we're all over the, the net and on all the major uh, podcast, uh, you know, wherever podcasts are available, I guess I should say. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm not going to go through them all. There are so many of them out there, but you can catch them there in your, in your favorite uh, podcast app. It's Drink with Rick. All right, well, we're going to get into the wine here in just a moment. Until I do that, but I mean, before I do that, I should say, let me say, give a shout out to everyone joining me in the chat now. Uh, Kathy and Mark Miller have joined in the chat. It's great to see you both. They're very good friends of ours uh, and neighbors, and they do a great, um, they, they do a great uh, house concert uh, series. And uh, let's see, did I just lose the feed? I hope not. There we go. It, it cuts out. It must be... It must be uh, bandwidth issues tonight. It looks like we're still good on Facebook, uh, excuse me, on YouTube, so it should be okay. And uh, Frosty has joined us in the chat. Frosty, it's always great to see you, my friend. And, uh, you know, I've got this thing. I want to send you this T-shirt that you won. And, um, you know, you, you, please email me your your uh, a shipping address where I can send this out to you because I really want to get this out to you. Uh, I just need to get an email address from you. I'll try to private message you uh, again later on and see what... Uh, See if I can get an email address from you so I can get this out, this shirt out to you in a, in a timely manner. Uh, but um, I also, Bill, Bill, if you're uh, Bill Horton, if you're watching later on, um, I, I try to contact you a couple of times for uh, sending you the things you won uh, online. And Phil, also my good friend Phil Bond, you won the calendar a couple of weeks ago, and and I need. Um, uh, a shipping address for for both of you gentlemen, so I can ship these items out to you because uh, I, I I really want to to get them out to you. 
All right, well, so let's take a look and see what we've got for wine tonight. This is what we're drinking tonight. This is a Cabernet, and, you know, this is from France, so I'm going to butcher the language, of course, uh, even though it took a year of French in high school. Uh, this is the Maisé de, de la Palombière. It's a paste doc, that's French, and uh, it's a 2018 2018 Cabernet Sauvignon. A couple of interesting things about this cab that um, there's not a whole lot of it online, uh, you know, information online on this Cabernet, but uh, what I did find uh, was uh, was rather interesting. So we'll look at that. And this is the, we're, I'm going to go ahead and read the, the back end of this thing as well, because, uh, let me see if I can find the, the uh, there we go. Uh, this is the back end. Or that's one side. It's actually on the sides. If you notice carefully on the previous image, there are two sides. It's on the front and sides. There's a label that goes around about three, about four fifths of the way around the bottle. So uh, that's what we're looking at. I'm going to try and read this. It is difficult to read. Uh, of course, sideways is difficult to see, but I'm going to read this as best I can. It says, Maze de la Palombière produces and makes the vinification of its wine since 1859 on the magnificent terroir of small pebbles like in Roman antiquity. This is very difficult to read because they've got it all in, 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 uh, in that font. We have selected the most expressive grapes of Cabernet Sauvignon for this the we pick our harvest date to assure highly concentrated juice with notes of red fruits. Aging in French oak barrel gives the aromas of tasty chocolate and vanilla. It is a product of France, and uh, this uh, it's very very difficult to read this, but uh, I was able to get through it. I think um, there is another side to this as well. On the other side, there is uh, there's a part two to this back course this the other side it says 1869 of course that's when they i guess when they founded the uh, 1859 was when they well it says 1869 but on the other side it said they the they were uh, making wine since 1859 so uh, i don't know a little discrepancy there maybe but uh, anyway that's what it says and, and it's difficult to read some of this other uh the rest of it but i will say going back to the the first image that uh, on the front, it is. It does say that there is. It's it's a 2018. It is 15 percent alcohol by volume in the 750 milliliter bottle. Now, um, I, I, you know, this is a kind of a short bottle, and you're saying, "Wow, is it really 750 milliliters?" Yeah, because it's kind of a wide bottle. So that's that's what we're looking at. We're going to go ahead and open this bottle of wine. Before I do that, let me introduce the food that we'll be pairing it with. This is really nice. Um, I'm going to be pairing it tonight with um, this uh, wonderful uh, grilled steak that my uh, lovely wife, Chi, made last night. These are actually the leftovers, but they were really good. Um, this is how she, and she marinated it. I'm not sure what she marinated in, but it's her own special marinade, and uh, it's really, really good. Uh, I should have had a, I should have had a couple more reallys to that. <laughs> really, 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 really good. And also some chicken. She she did some grilled chicken as well. And you know I don't know if you can see the the um, spot uh, the uh, whatever she put on it, but it, it's this chicken is really good. I also have some cheeses. I have a soft um, let's see. And there are actually all soft cheeses except for the smoked cheddar. I have a smoked cheddar here, which should be okay with the cab. Uh, some, uh, what else do I have here? I have the um, uh, Colby Jack cheese, and I have some soft mozzarella. I think this is Gilb, um, what is this called? Uh, 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 I, I forgot what it's called, Gilbert or something like that. It's, it escapes me at the moment. Um, and I also have my favorite uh, Cheddar Joe's creamy gouda cheese which so far we have not had a wine that did not go well with that cheese and we've tried a, a number of different wines with it so it should be interesting to try this tonight also my lovely wife took some time out of her day to bake some chocolate chip cookies and this should go well with the wine chocolate cabernet chocolate 
sweet stuff that always goes well with with a cabernet i think almost always we're going to try it out we'll see so let's go ahead and open this bottle of wine let me just double check the the chats again see if anyone else is joining us uh looks like uh we've got someone watching on youtube uh twitch we've uh I think we've got, we've got folks watching on Twitch, no comments as yet, but uh, and let me check the Twitter comments. Nothing going on with the Twitter comments, so we're going to go ahead and open this bottle of wine and try it out. And uh, while it's, while it's uh, uh, breathing, when I, once I open it, I'll tell you a little bit about this wine, the, the little that I did find online. Now... <clears throat> I have, of course, my foil cutter to open this up with, and this is a really thick, I don't know if I'm going to have a tough time trying to open this, this is very thick, uh, this very thick wide mouth, so my foil cutter doesn't easily fit around this thing. Also, I have heard hearsay online that uh, this uh, the, the, the corks are a little bit tough to get out, but fortunately, I have my trusty mechanical corkscrew purchased from Aldi but uh, actually it was purchased from, from uh, an estate sale by my wife Chi and then uh, apparently came originally came from Aldi in, in uh, the UK and transported here whoops yeah this is kind of a tough one to get out and I don't want to crack the oh boy this is a really tough one to get out this is a really tough cork to get out let me resort to a backup here if I can't Whoa, this is a tough cork to get out of this bottle. I don't know why they packed this thing so tightly. Wow. I'm glad I had this mechanical corkscrew because I don't think I would have been able to get it out with a very easily. It was tough with that. And that's usually, this is usually very, very easy to work with. I don't know that uh, I would have gotten it out with any other type of corkscrew. That's very, very tough. And I did hear in some of the reviews that I've read on it, um, the few that are out there, it was mentioned that this is a really tough, tough uh, cork to get out of the bottle. Um, maybe they need to work on that a little bit. Uh, so that's, uh, oh, hey, this is all reviews, so, you know, you can see. And, of course, I've got my trusty aerator, my Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lovers Group. Although the mouth, look at that. It's so large, the mouth is so wide, this thing, I don't feel comfortable pouring in through the aerator. So we're going to skip that. This is a, you know, what would have worked is the aerator that I have back here that my lovely wife, Chi, purchased for, uh, that she gave me for, for the holidays. Um, I could have poured it in that, but I didn't really have it set up tonight, so we're not going to do that. I don't know if you can see it in the background. It's way in the back. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pour it, and then we're going to let it breathe a little bit longer. And we're going to pour it into my trusty Cooper's Hawk. Genuine crystal wine glass from the Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. We'll get a little pour and just a little bit, and we're going to let it breathe a little and try it out. And get a little swirl here. And while it's doing that, I oh the aromas are strong here. It smells very very fruity, and it smells like a very fruity cab. So uh, uh, I'm I'm curious to see what it's going to taste like. So uh, while it's waiting, uh, while we're letting that um, maybe swirl around a little bit more, we're waiting for that to breathe a little bit. Uh, let's check out where now I picked this up at wine store, wine store-online.com. And I picked it up in our store. We have a local store in, um, in Blakeney here in North Carolina. And I have uh, that pulled up. There's not a whole lot of information on this wine, but you know, it's funny because when I, I was originally going to open up this bottle of wine a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and I couldn't even find it on the website. And here it's on the website now. Maybe they, uh, I know they watch. I know they watch. Matt, if you're watching now, I appreciate you putting it up there. That's uh, uh, that, that's good. It's very helpful. But um, I'll read you what they have on their website. It says, uh, Mese de, uh, de la uh, well, it's de Palombier. This 100% Cabernet is full of dark berry flavors to offset its tough guy tannins. Mm, lots of tannins. Well, we're looking forward to that. This is a big wine for little money. It's basically the wine equivalent to Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Best movie ever. 
I don't know. I would necessarily agree with that. Uh, Roadhouse, good, good film. I, I, Patrick Swayze, yeah. But uh, I don't know. Best movie ever. I have my favorites. But we're not going there right now. This is right now. This is about the wine. And uh, let's see what when I checked around online, it was uh, we had let's see the vino gave it three point seven stars out of four stars. And uh, apparently a lot of people like this wine. And, and, and I was told it's a pretty popular wine at Wine Store in Blakeney. I had other people walking in while I was looking at this wine over and saying, oh, yeah, that's a real good line, a wine. I love this wine. So that's what really compelled me to try that. Also, Trish uh, there, she, she highly recommended it. So I'm going to try I'm going to give it a try. So let's see. A wine searcher, wine searcher has this wine for $12.99 a bottle. And uh, it, let's see, where, anywhere else where I can, well, it's nowhere else. Uh, okay, a wine store uh, is selling it for $12.99. And let me see how, it didn't list it on Vivino, the price. But let me tell you what I paid for it because I do have the original receipt in my hands from wine store. And uh, I paid $12.99 a bottle. As, uh, as Matt would say, uh, 12, uh, 12 99 all day, every day, right? <laughs> That's what Matt says. Uh, so that is what we have going on. Any, anything else going on in the chats before I take a, uh, take a little whiff of this and a little, let's see. All right, nothing else, much else going on Facebook at the moment. So let's go ahead and drink this wine. Let's try it out and see what it smells like, see what it tastes like. Now on the nose, it's I, I could tell I could get the aroma right there. It's 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 definitely a cab and it's very fruity. So, yep, definitely a cab, <laughs> definitely a fruity cab. I think I saw somewhere else that, uh, yeah. Let's see. And it did very much the deep cherry. The deep, uh, dark, dark black cherry is what I'm smelling, and um, hmm. yeah, let's give it a taste. Okay, whoa, little tartness to it, little tartness to it, right there, and at the offset. Rather acidic. Rather acidic. Let's see. This is a bold uh, looking wine. It, it, this is a dark, kind of bold looking wine. It has a pretty bold flavor to it. And uh, it is very full body. This is a full bodied, definitely a full body cab, I would say. Tannic, very, um, you know, fairly tannic. A lot of tannins in this wine. It's very dry, very dry, um, but it, it is definitely definitely acidic. I'm gonna do this. Is kind of hard to pour with this big mouth on this. Mouth is, not, it's, the mouth is almost as big as it's not mine, huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's not go there right now. <laughs> uh, being self self deprecating humor, right? It's a little oaky. It does taste oaky. And a little leathery, little little leathery, but it's it's oaky. It's not as um, I would say it's it's not as it's fruity, but it's not as fruity as I would expect it based on the first whiff or two I had. And I expected super fruity, but uh, it's it's actually fairly smooth, and it's. Um, and you know it's it, it's it's dry, it's dry dry going down, but on the tongue it tastes a little sweet. When I first first tasted, I thought it was it had kind of a sweetness to it, and then as it went down, it just dried out. I mean, just very very dry, and um, it's a, yeah, it's a little little smoky, but it's a pretty smooth wine. I want to say it says a little little. A little on the silky side, a little on the silky side, but um, it's not. It's it's not that. It's it's a little oaky, not too bad, 
not too too oaky. It's it's okay, but uh, it's it is somewhat it, it it's weird. It, it it starts off sweet on the tongue, and then after I start to swallow, going down the finish, it's very dry. Interesting, interesting wine. We're gonna have a little more of this, as a matter of fact. That's uh, hard to pour. That's I think the bottle looks kind of neat, but I have to say that. I'm not a huge, it, it doesn't seem very practical <laughs> for pouring this wine out. I've got to be very careful. I don't want to mess up the keyboard down here or the microphone in front of me or anything else. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, it's easy to hold, but it's just pouring it out with the wide mouth. And I guess that's why they have the extra big corkscrew is probably to make sure they're covered on that with a wider mouth. Um, I, I don't know. It's... I can't say I'm, I'm a big fan of pouring this wine, but it's it's fairly easy to drink. It's fairly easy to drink. Let's go back to chat for a moment, and Kathy and Mark are, are there, Frosty. Uh, let's see, my lovely wife, Chi, she's usually watching, but tonight she is, <clears throat> she is painting um, the kids' bathroom tonight. He needed that for a long time, so she and T are making that a, a paint painting project. So that's what they're doing. Let's go ahead and pair it with some food. So we're going to try and pair it up with the with the food. Now I've got I've got this wonderful steak that my lovely wife she made and a cabernet cabernet salad. Everything I have on this plate pretty much should go good with the cabernet. Now the the chicken being a white meat, but because it's grilled chicken and it's kind of spicy, it should still be okay with the cab. So we'll we'll give this a try. And it's cold. They're, it's a little bit cold because uh, that's how I brought it up. Mm. I love this steak. Awesome. Awesome T-bone steak. Mm. Mm. Okay. This wine, this wine it, it seems to be silkier with the steak in my mouth. It seems to, the silkiness really comes through. A little bit more with the steak, uh, which is interesting. It kind of the tannins help. Tannins definitely help with the steak. Not bad. My lovely wife Chi has joined us in the chat. Hi, Chi, and um, I hope everything went well with your your uh, your painting project. <clears throat> it's going well. I know it's small any fumes over here. I'm across the hallway from it, <laughs> so it must be okay. Let's try a little more steak with this. This could be good. I like it with the steak. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like it. You know what's funny with the steak? I can't really taste the really dark berries. I mean, there's supposed to be some blackberry in here. Um, I was I was tasting the the, the, the black cherry, but I can't say that. Um, let's see. I think I just lost. There we go. I want to make sure I didn't lose the feed again. <clears throat> it, but I can't say that it was uh, super fruity. Although I've heard from some other people that it is really fruity. It is, but it's fruitier on the nose than it is uh, on the tongue. Definitely sweet on the tongue. And then it kind of dries out as, it, as it's going down. Interesting. Let's try it with the chicken. I'm not expecting it to go be perfect with the, the grilled chicken, but it should be all right. I mean, you know, it's a cab. And this is a spicier chicken. Mm. Just bit my tongue a little bit. Not tongue, but lip. Mm. Good. It goes better with the steak. Mm. All right, so let's try it with, uh, we're going to try it a little bit with the, uh, the uh, what is this, Colby Jack. Try it with a little Colby Jack. I'll pour a little bit more wine. Mm. Good. Yeah, oh, yeah, it brings out the smokiness. It brings out the smoky flavor in the wine a little bit. More um, with this Colby Jack. Very good. I like that. And um, let me clear my palate out just a little bit. I 
I normally have some crackers up here with me to help me clear the palate, but I forgot to bring those up tonight, so I'm just relying on the water to do that a little. <clears throat> Let's try it with the smoked cheddar. I'm pretty sure that this smoked cheddar is going to be okay with this with this cab. Pretty sure it will be. Especially with the tannins in this cab, it should be all right. I just like that bowl. Those bold flavors, bold flavors of this cheese and cab. Mmm. Oh, nice, nice. It does the, the smokiness of the cheddar and the smokiness of the cab. And the and, and the, and the cab's already a little bit, you know, silky, a little velvety kind of uh, feel. It, it's actually it's actually not bad. I like it. Mm. It goes well with the smoked cheddar. Now, let's try it with my favorite, the um, the Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda, which, now, of course, up to this time, up to this point, we've tried it with, uh, what, about six or seven different wines back here. I have not had a miss yet on this. Hmm. Love that Gouda. A winner. Still a winner. I like that. Still a winner. We're going to try it uh, with the cookies in a little while. But first, let's uh, get back to the chat, uh, get back to see what's going on here. Because this show isn't about me. It's not completely about the wine. This is about us. You and me interacting together, having a good time. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drinking. Um, and if you if you really want to see me drinking it bad enough and I can't get around here, send me a bottle. I'll be happy to drink it. <laughs> and I'll give it a fair review. I promise a fair review. Honest review. Let's see. No, uh, nothing going on, on YouTube. And uh, Twitch is... Uh, Nothing going on on Twitch so much. Let me uh, let everyone know we're here. Okay. Uh, okay, a periscope is up still. Good. Everything is, is going good. All right, let's go ahead and get into the uh, toast of birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, actually, I have a couple of... I have, a, I have one anniversary to toast a little bit ahead of time, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let me refill the glass while we're waiting. The first birthday that I would like to toast is for, and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, put her name here. I don't know. It's it. Uh, she's not on Facebook. She's not online anywhere actually, because this is for my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law Juliana and Sean, or who we call affectionately call, and I, or Lola. For the for the, uh, it's she's Phil, she's from the Philippines, and and I is is the uh, Tagalog word for for mother, and Lola is the Tagalog term for grandmother, and she is both, and she's actually a, I believe she's even a great grandmother at, at this point in time. So, um, she is I believe she's approaching she's eighty five. I think she turned eighty five yesterday. Her birthday was on the I believe on the seventh, and. Um, this is for you and I. I don't know if you're watching now or later, but uh, this is to you. Happy, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, I should say, but happy birthday to you. To my mother-in-law, Juliana and Shang, and I. And um, you know what? I'll toast her again just because I can. She doesn't drink herself. Uh, although we have tried to get her to drink, but uh, have some wine. She doesn't touch it, but uh, it's okay. I'll drink it for her. And happy birthday and I. Uh, our next birthday, uh, Brett, next birthday shout out. <clears throat> oh, and Rob's joining us in the chat. Rob, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's, uh, let me give a, a birthday shout out to my brother-in-law, Tom. Tom Harms. Um, Tom's birthday is... Uh, Wednesday, coming up on the 12th. Whoa, this is a month. I'll tell you what, February is a month for birthdays. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in a minute. But uh, my brother-in-law, Tom, 
who is uh, the husband of my sister Penny, who has been in, who's been uh, fairly regular in the wine stream in the past. Uh, my brother-in-law Tom, he a fine, fine guy, very entrepreneurial guy, and uh, uh, really, he, he's got a really good, good head on his shoulders. Tom, here's to you. Uh, I know that you don't uh, prefer reds; you prefer whites over reds, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, did we lose the stream again? Uh, we might have lost the stream. Anyway, so uh, it came back. There we go. <laughs> anyway, Tom, um, he, uh, his birthday, I'm not going to give his age away, <laughs> but his birthday is on Wednesday on the 12th. And I want to say happy birthday to my brother-in-law, Tom. I really, really, uh, I have a lot of respect for Tom. He's a great guy. He really is. Tom, this is for you. Happy birthday. And you know what? I should have, you know what? In honor of your birthday, I should have opened up a bottle of the white wine. Uh, although I did not do that. Uh, I have a bottle of white. I have a couple of bottles of white over here that I'm going to open up in the future. But uh, maybe next time I'll, I'll do one in your, in your honor and, and toast you an extra time when I open that bottle of white. And anyway, so here's to you, Tom. Happy birthday. I hope it's a very happy one. Enjoy it. You guys go out, celebrate. I just celebrate responsibly. I know you do. Here's to you. Happy birthday. And let's see. Who else do we have going on here? Oh, yes. my An old friend of mine, Lisa. Lisa Ruby. Uh, her birthday is also on the 12th. It's coming Wednesday. And, you know, I haven't seen uh, Lisa in years, but we are friends on Facebook and I think LinkedIn, too, as well. We go way, way back to Channel 35. Um, and let's see, uh, who uh, other uh, Channel 35 alumni will remember uh, remember her? Phil. Oh, Phil's joining us in the chat. Phil, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. And, um, you know, I, I want to say uh, Lisa Ruby. Phil, you remember Lisa? Um, she's... Uh, she was in the sales department, and uh, many we worked with, worked together for many many years at, over at Channel Thirty Five. Really nice lady, and um, here's to you, Lisa. Your birthday on the uh, is it twelfth? Yes, Wednesday. And you know what? I'll toast Lisa again. It's actually I think it's pronounced Lisa, right? <laughs> Sorry about that, but Lisa Ruby. Here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. Her husband, Chip, I remember her, her husband. Um, her husband is really, really cool guy. Really laid back, a cool guy. Um, let's see. Who else do I have here? Um, my, oh, yes. One other special, special birthday. And I better, I guess I better refill my glass for this a little bit. Another special. All, all the birthdays are special. They are. All of your birthdays are special. This one's very, very near and dear to my heart because this is for my firstborn daughter, Tia. Tia Savoya. She is going to be 22 years old on the 13th, on uh, on Thursday, 213. She was born 213, 1998. Here's to my daughter, Tia. And uh, you know what? I'll toast you again also, just because I can. Anyway, my daughter Tia, young, beautiful, very, very talented. She's very, she's a very talented artist. Um, here's to you, Tia, and your talents. Uh, uh, you know, in fact, if you, uh, she does commissions. So if you are uh, looking for someone to commission a piece of art, and you can uh, contact her, and, and she'll do that for you. There's a, there's a plug for, for, <laughs> for her. Anyway, Tia, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. And there's one anniversary coming up that I can't forget. Chi, you still there? <laughs> one special anniversary coming up that I can't forget. That uh, And I better not forget because if I did, I'd be in big, big trouble. And it's, it's very difficult to forget. This is going to be on uh, Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. On the 14th of February, 26 years ago... My uh, lovely young wife, Chi, and I tied the knot. We were married 
26 years ago, on February 14th, here's to you, Chi, and our anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. And uh, I'm going to do that again because, you know, this is very, very special. My wife and I, my wife is a really, um, really wonderful lady. She's also very, very talented. She, she's a talented artist in her own right. She's a very, very talented cook. I can attest to that personally. She has her own recipes that we keep telling her, you've got to write them down and put them in the book. She's been working on that a little bit uh, off and on, but uh, kind of in her spare time. But um, <clears throat> usually she's so busy in the kitchen cooking that she doesn't seem to have her time to write down the, the, the recipes. She has them all in her head. But um, I tell you what, fabulous recipes. One of these days, we're going to help her publish that, that recipe book, that uh, the cookbook that she's been working on. Anyway, once again, Chi, here is to you, honey, and a happy anniversary. There have been 26 years. Um, I, I, I don't know what I would do with my wife, I, without my wife. What am I saying? <laughs> with, without my wife. I don't know what I would do without my wife. She is an amazing person all the way around. And she keeps me in line. And look, she puts up with me. She puts up with me. Uh, you know, every time I, I, I mention her anniversary, she goes, yeah, and I survived. Yeah, she did. And she's, uh, she's, just, she, she's just a great person all the way around. And she can be a tough little cookie. She can. But uh, she's, uh, I, but I love her. And she, I don't know what I would do without her. She is, for all intents and purposes, she is in any sense of the word, my better half. And I'm really grateful for her. I, I'm thankful for my wife and my daughter and my son every day. There's to you, Chi, in our anniversary. You know, and if Gordon shows up in the chat later on, I know he does his, uh, his uh, regular thing where he, he does his gratitude uh, videos. And I tell you, that's what I'm grateful for every day, Gordon, is, is um, my wife and... Uh, my son and my daughter. I'm uh, just uh, really, really thankful for all of them. Let's see. I think that does it for our uh, birthdays and anniversaries. So I think we kind of go on to national days. Before we do that, let me check in and see how are things are going. Everybody's really quiet. we got people watching, but they're all really quiet tonight. Uh, and Chris, it looks like Chris is uh, sh showing up in the chat. Chris, uh, you know, hey, chime in. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you're doing. We're getting ready for PodFest. That's just in a few weeks. And um, right now, I, if, if I go off on a tangent, because that's what I do on this Stream of Consciousness show, uh, you know, I we, we love PodFest. It's really more like a family type of, of, of atmosphere. And uh, Tommy and I, already, we already have our tickets. We already have the room booked. We're already, we're pretty much ready to go for the most part. I, oh, I have to order a few more cards for, uh, for the uh, business cards and stuff like that. But uh, we're pretty much all ready to go. Tommy's already ordered t-shirts he wants to give out and things like that uh, for his podcast. And he's, he's getting everything ready. But there is just one thing that we're really concerned about is that in this trip, um, well, two, two things. One, uh, Tommy couldn't break away. We, we planned to, to be there a little bit earlier. So it actually booked the room for four nights but we couldn't do it because uh, Tommy's taking a class around. He's going to college, so uh, his professor wanted him to... Uh, he has a Thursday night class, and his professor required him to be at all the classes. Wouldn't wouldn't give him a, 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 any class time off. So we're going to have to really, really... Um, we're we're going to have to leave right after his Thursday night class. We're going to have to jump in the car and drive all night down there and... and um, and then try to uh, get there in time for check-in Friday morning, but uh, for the PodFest. So um, that's that's going to be a little bit hectic because it's an eight-hour drive down to Orlando. It's an eight-hour drive, uh, and that's straight. That's if you're driving straight. Me, I, I used to be able to drive straight, but I, I just can't do it anymore. At my age, I'm 60. I'm approaching 61. Uh, <laughs> that's a birthday I didn't mention. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the the Friday the fifteenth is uh, uh, is is going to be my birthday. Um, I'm going to be sixty one years old then, but uh, and I'm not really toasting myself in that because I'm not really into <laughs> toasting myself. Uh, 
but you know we're, we're going to be really scrambling to get down there and it's going to be scrambling to get back the other the other thing the other kink in the chain is that uh you know he's also working so uh he's not 100 percent sure that you're going to let him have the time off so there is a possibility we might have a little bit of a glitch going down to Potfest. so hopefully we'll be able to we'll be able to work that out no problems or anything tommy's trying to get that worked out at work uh, and hopefully we won't have any glitches there, but it is, it is a little bit up in the air right now until we know for sure how things are going to go podcast-wise. But I'm, hopefully we can make it down there, and I'm looking forward to seeing all my, my uh, fellow podcasters and my friends at PodFest. We'll see how that works. Uh, oh, yes, National Days. Let's check out the National Days this week because we have quite a few National Days to celebrate. And, of course, I'm pulling this up from nationaldaycalendar.com. If I can find I did, did have the website pulled up here a minute ago. Where is it? Uh, there it is. And um, let's see. Today, the second Saturday in February, is National – it's it's Global Movie Day. Global Movie Day. I used to love movies all the time. I'll, I still like movies. But I used to – when I was younger – I practically lived in a movie theater, <laughs> pretty much. I was there all the time. Loved them going to, out to the movies. Uh, so, uh, globally, I'll drink to Global Movie Day. Why not? And it's National Boy Scouts Day. That's today, National Boy Scouts Day. A lot of you, most of you may not know that I was, when I was younger, at one time, I was a Boy Scout. I had joined the Scouts. I was into scouting when I was about 12 years old because I had a way, of, and I was looking forward. That was when I was looking forward to my. No, it was I was younger than that. I was like uh, 10, I think. Uh, and um, anyway, that so I joined the Boy Scouts. I was there for a year until we moved, um, and uh, an interesting story behind that. I got stories about Boy Scouts. I talk about it another time, but. Um, I earned, I think I was working towards one of my badges. I can't remember which one it was at the time, uh, my first badge. So I was only in the Boy Scouts for a year, but I was working towards my, and this was in Salisbury, North Carolina. But I was uh, working towards that badge, and I completed it, and I'd, I'd earned the badge, but uh, I think it was the week, I think it was like a week after I left, or, or yeah, I think it was a week after I left, that's when they issued the badges. So I didn't get my badge for a while. I think uh, somebody else uh, sent it to me or gave it to me after the fact. And uh, I had to, to uh, quit the Boy Scouts at that point because where we were going on in, in Orlando, it, I didn't know what the troop was down there. And, and uh, at that point, there was just so much going on that we just didn't have time to – I didn't have time to uh, – uh, find the local troop and a lot of things happened. Anyway, that's a long story. Anyway – uh, so I earned my badge, but I didn't get it until like a year later after we moved because one of my friends, uh, who was also in the Scouts with me up there in Salisbury, he had uh, picked up the badge for me and uh, sent it on to me, and I appreciate that. I've got it somewhere; it's in a closet somewhere. I still have, I, I used to, I, for years I kept my Boy Scout uniform. <laughs> I got a picture of myself in my Scouting uniform. I, I don't. I, I should put that up. I'm not. It's a uh, that was a long time ago. Anyway, here's the Boy, National Boy Scouts Day. Uh, National Kite Flying Day is today. When I was a kid, did you ever fly a kite when you were a kid? I flew kites. My uh, my brothers and my sisters and I, we, we uh, flew kites when we were kids, and we had plenty of room outside in the house when we lived in North Carolina to fly kites with. And even in Orlando, we moved down to Orlando, we had plenty of room in the back. We'd go about there and, and fly kites. And it was a lot of fun. And when uh, when uh, T and Tommy came along, when they were young, uh, we did that. We, we'd go out to the to the park in you know to the local park where there was plenty of room, and uh, bought them a couple of kites. And and we on an occasion or two, we did go out there and, and fly them ourselves. So it was a lot of fun. Here's the National Kite Flying Day. I'll go with that National Count Flying Day. Uh, count, kite Flying Day. Boy, maybe I should cap this now. Huh? <laughs> okay, so National Kite Flying Day. What else we have here? We have, um, there we go, National Iowa Day. <laughs> okay, look, I'm, I'm, this is not, I, I, we don't talk about politics or religion on the show. 
Everybody who, who's uh, a regular on the show knows that. Um, so, but you know why I'm laughing. National Iowa Day, I'm pretty sure that this past week there are a lot of people who do not want to toast National Iowa Day for, for uh, reasons that I'm, I'm not going to go into. But um, look, Iowa is one of the great 50 states of the U.S., right? In spite of uh, whatever was going on, uh, here's a National Iowa Day. Just because they're one of the great 50 states of our country. And uh, Iowans, they're getting the bad rap right now. But, you know, it's Iowa. Things are a little different there. <clears throat> uh, February 9th, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, in about an hour and 15 minutes, 13 minutes, is... Um, National Cut the Cord Day. I have a rant about that, but I'm not going to go into it. And I, I think, actually, I think I mentioned that before. We we talked about that cutting the cord. I cut the cord. Um, what are we referring to when you call National Cut the Cord Day? Well, of course, for those who are not aware, that's when you're cutting the cord to cable and and physical phone lines and things like that. Mostly cable, cable DSL lines, things like that. And you're watching TV either over the air or on the internet, or whatever, you know, watching movies on the internet, uh, downloading uh, movies. Now, technically, you're really, if, if, you, if you have cable internet or DSL internet or, uh, or if you're fortunate enough to have um, fiber internet, technically, you're not cutting the cord because those are all delivered over cords, right? But uh, what they're referring to mostly is, is not internet cutting the cord, but uh, cutting the, the, the cable cord for, for, entertaining, uh, for entertainment, for, for TV and, and movies and things like that. We cut the cord. She and I, when we had satellite, um, well, we, had, we originally had Time Warner cable down in uh in orlando but we moved up to to charlotte and well we we had cable at one point and then we switched over to satellite uh we had a satellite small satellite dish in our house in oviedo but uh when we left oviedo we left all of that behind we decided to just go ahead and cut the cord because at that time our children were very young and we would be flipping the channels and yeah there are hundreds and hundreds of channels to choose from but most of that stuff was just junk. And a lot of that stuff was stuff you would not want to a small child to see. There's some stuff on there I don't think anybody should see personally. But that's my opinion. But um, there definitely some stuff that, that children really shouldn't see. And if, if my kids were just, you know, getting around to using the the uh, remote control, and it really bothered us that, well, they could be inter inadvertently, you know, we try to supervise them as much as possible for, for television watching, but uh, they get on there and they inter inadvertently going around, uh, you know, flipping the channels and seeing some of this stuff. We, we just, it just bothered us. It bothered us a lot. So that was one of the main reasons we cut the cord. The other reason was because of the high cost. It was just ridiculously high cost. And cable for so long they would not let you do a la carte like for instance I, you know if i signed up for cable service there were 120 150 channels and i wanted the only reason i wanted the cable service was just for a few channels just for you know a sci-fi channel at the time i still was watching sci-fi network and a few other channels there uh, there were maybe like six or seven channels that i really wanted to watch but you couldn't just do that. You couldn't just pick the channels you want to watch. You had to either just get the whole package, uh, and if you want to upgrade to maybe a channel that you want to watch that was on a premium package, you had to get the premium package and then pay extra for all the other junk you didn't you weren't interested in. And it drove me nuts because I thought to myself, why can't I just pick and choose what I want and bundle a specific package? And the cable channel, the cable companies did not like that. They didn't want that because they wanted to lock you in. There are other reasons. So we're not going to go into that tonight, but. That came back to bite them big time because when the internet came along and streaming began to happen with television and TV and, and uh, 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 for movies, the, uh, you know, the cable companies just did not want to budge. And people started, once they found out that, hey, you know what, I can watch whatever I want to watch, whenever I want to watch it, and I can pick and choose which things I want to watch. 
without having to be locked down to these exorbitant rates, people started leaving and start off with a trickle and they started leaving in droves. And then the cable companies like, hey, what, the last year or so, now they're wanting to, to offer a la carte items from what I hear? A little bit, too little too late in my opinion. I think the cable companies got a clue way too late. Because they, they didn't think that was going to happen. They didn't think everybody was just going to leave in mass. But that's what happened. And um, and they still try to lock you into things. But um, people don't like that. People don't like to be locked in. For the most part, they want the freedom to be able to choose when and how they want to watch things and and what they want to watch. If I want if they if they want to watch a sports channel and they don't like some of this uh, some of this other stuff, they they can through the internet and now through all of the uh, the specialty channels, they can choose to subscribe just to that sports channel. And they save a ton of money that way. So uh, that makes a makes total sense. It makes total sense to do that. So here's an actual cut the cord day. We cut the cord 12 years ago. We have never looked back. Never. Here's the National Cut the Cord Day. I will definitely drink to that. <clears throat> National Bagel and Lox Day, also tomorrow. National Bagel and Lox Day. I like bagel and lox. I haven't had lox much, but, uh, but I love bagels. There's a great bagel place. If you're ever down in Orlando, you know, we make a point to stop there just about every time for breakfast, uh, at least once on our, every trip to Orlando. And uh, my wife uh, used to know uh, one of the owners there. Uh, that would be Bagel King, Bagel King in Orlando. Here's a shout-out to Bagel King. I know I've given shout-outs to other places like uh, for, uh, Fratello's and, and uh, uh, my favorite pizza place down there. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Jeremiah's Italian Ice. This time I want to make a shout, give a shout out to Bagel King down there. Great, great place. Here's the National Bagel and Locks Day, and to Bagel King. National Pizza Day. All right, who who's with me on drinking to that? National Pizza Day. I'll drink to National Pizza Day. Let me check the chat here. Um, National Pizza Day. We definitely have to toast that. One of my favorite, one of my favorite foods. Who, who doesn't love pizza? Who does not love pizza? You don't have to be an Italian to, to like pizza, right? Here's the National Pizza Day. Yes. And <clears throat> National Toothache Day. I don't, I'm not drinking of that. I, I do not want a toothache. Had toothaches, they're not fun. I'm not toasting that, okay? National Toothache Day. Goodness, I could do without that. February 10th is cl National Clean Out Your Computer Day. That's the second Monday in February. I will drink to that. Everyone should do that every once in a while. I need to do that. National Cream Cheese and Brownie Day. National Home Warranty Day. And National Umbrella Day. Here's to all those days. So, and then I think February 11th, I'm going to just read through these. Na uh, February 11th, National Don't Cry Over Spilled Milk Day. National Inventors Day. That's a good day. National Make a Friend Day. You know what? I'm going to take a break now and drink to that because I'm all for making friends. And that's what this wine show is really about, making friends and, ta and, and getting to, to um, uh, hang out with friends and enjoy the company of friends, whether they're in person, online, wherever you are, anywhere around the world, because you can watch this anywhere around the world, right? National Make a Friend Day. I am all for that. Then there's National Peppermint Patty Day, National Shut-In Visitation Day. You know, if you if you know someone who is a shut-in, who can't get out, can't get around, um, that's that's a good thing to do a visit them because then there are some people that are particularly elderly who cannot get out anymore who not, can't go anywhere and uh, I'm sure that, that gets pretty lonely I think I would be very lonely um, as well and um, I, I, I think if you can visit someone who is a shut-in um, I think that would make their day so here's the National Shut-In Visitation Day then we have National White Shirt Day 
and National Safer Internet Day in the U.S. And that changes every year. Here's to, say, here's to a safer internet. I think the FCC is trying to take some steps to make it a safer internet. They are supposed to be taking some steps to um, to fix the whole robocall issue. I've been getting robocall. I don't know if you've been getting robocalls, but I've been, getting, ro been ro getting robocalls like crazy. And it seems like the number of robocalls I've been getting every day has gone up ever since the FCC announced that they were going to be clamping down on robocalls. <laughs> It seems like, I guess we better get finish getting all our robocalls out before they shut us down. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, just, it seems like the more that the FCC tries to clamp down on this, the worse the problem gets. So I don't know where that's going, at least for me. All right, so I guess that does it for our National Days this week. And, of course, you can go to nationaldaycalendar.com. And check it out. And I think there are a few National Day calendars available. Phil, please get and send me your email. Me your your uh, where's my email address here? Send send me your uh, your shipping address so I can get that calendar out because you won the National Day calendar uh, some weeks ago. And uh, I I need your address so I, I know where to mail it. I just want to. I'm not going to do it. I promise. I'm not going to do anything else with your address. I'm just going to use it to to mail uh, to get that out to you somehow. So. Um, Let's see, where was it going here? What we we have next year? Ah, you know what? Uh, we're going to shut this down a little it's pretty soon, another 10, 15 minutes. But before we do that, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute, or a couple of minutes. But before we do that, I am going to tell you about, uh, about a snow day uh, thing that we had today. This is very, very interesting. Uh, looks like Twitch, looks like we lost our Twitch uh, here we go. Uh, uh, lost the Twitch feed. Anyway, um, I don't know what's going on with Twitch here. It looks like it was, uh, it, it went, just went down. But, uh, we have people in Twitch. It's, uh, just to let you know, uh, Ani OTF said, what's going on, Rick? What are we drinking tonight? We are drinking, just as a reminder, we are drinking. I don't know if you can see it now, but if you if you can still hear me, uh, the video was canceled. But uh, if you can still hear me, you can switch over to YouTube and watch the rest of it on YouTube. We are drinking tonight the uh, this Cabernet. We're drinking the Cabernet uh, Mazé de la Palombière. It's 2018. This is a French wine. It's actually pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I'll give you a final review in in, in a few minutes. But, uh, oh, man, the Twitch feed just went down, didn't it? Sorry about that, folks, on Twitch. It, I don't know what happened there, but it uh, looks like we lost the Twitch feed. So, um, but anyway, Oni OTF, that's what we're drinking tonight. And let's see what's going on. It looks like we're good on, on YouTube. YouTube is, is up fine. So uh, I don't know what's going on with uh, bandwidth tonight. It must be winter. It is winter still. But uh, that's what I was going to tell you about. Remember last week when I told you how uh, we we took a, a trip up, overnight trip up to uh, Bowling Rock, to Boone, North Carolina, up in the mountains, to visit the, um, uh, the, the, the college that Tommy's going to be going to in the fall. He's been accepted at, uh, uh, at the university up there, at Appalachian. And... Uh, we were going up there to take, take care of some details. Well, we, we had planned the trip, and the night before, I was checking the uh, weather report on WSOC TV, Channel 9. And uh, they said, well, yeah, it's going to rain. Uh, not going to rain a whole lot. Going to rain a little bit. No snow or anything. Maybe some snow in the high country, maybe, but it's going to be mostly rain. So we were... And they were saying, well, it's going to be a little bit rainy, but it's going to be cleared out. It's going to be cleared out by the by the afternoon, and 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 everything was going to be fine. So we're thinking, okay, we're going to leave in the morning. We're going to miss the rain since it wasn't supposed to start till the afternoon. We we're going to be up there by the afternoon. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Um, so we're going to be up there on the uh, up there on the. Uh, in the mountains by the afternoon, so we completely missed this rain thing, whatever was going to happen. Didn't mention snow, just rain, okay? 
So I'm, I'm locking the door, walk over to the car, start to get out to the car uh, to leave our house, the driveway, and it starts snowing, snowing in the driveway. And I'm thinking, well, this is completely the opposite of what the, uh, the uh, weather uh, forecaster said on, on Channel 9 the night before. So we get in the car and we're driving. Of course, it it it, it started it turned back to rain for a little while, and then it just started snowing. And it was the rest of the trip up there was just all snow, and it stopped snowing by the time we got. There. It was a really miserable drive, but it stopped snowing as we got there. But so I thought to myself, you know, Chi and I are looking at each other like, oh, well, that, that he he definitely got that wrong. So um, last night. Last night, this is a week later, uh, last night uh, we're watching um, Channel 9 again, WSOC TV, and the same weathercaster is saying, yeah, there's going to be some rain Saturday. We're going to have some rain in Charlotte on Saturday. But it's going to be some rain, you know, it's going to be kind of cold and rainy and kind of miserable, but then the rain will clear out and all that and we're, and everything. And he specifically said, we're not getting any snow. This is just going to be rain. There's no, there's no snow in this forecast, right? It's just, just some rain and then it's going to clear out and be done. So I'm I'm at my computer, I'm at my PC. She goes out, she, she takes a trip to, to Walmart, pick up some stuff today. And she calls me. She's gone for about 10 minutes. She calls me on the phone. And she goes, um, look out your window. So I look out the window. It's snowing. It's snowing. And and there were little snow flurries at first for about 10, 15 minutes. And then it started turning into big flakes. Now, granted, none of the snow stuck to the ground. None of it was sticking. But it was snow. It snowed for like t- a full two hours Two, two and a half hours down here in South Charlotte. In South Charlotte. We were at the border between uh, North and South Carolina. Snowing for nearly two and a half hours. And she started laughing because she said that he was wrong again. He was wrong again. I said, yeah, he, he sure was wrong. So um, to the to the weathercaster at Channel 9, WSOC-TV in Charlotte... You're 0 for 2 on this one. <laughs> you're, you're 0 and 2 on this one. Um, no wins, two losses here. That, that's uh, got it wrong twice in a week for snow. So we'll, we'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this a little early because I want to go catch the, um, the, tonight's weather cast and see if he uh, predicts something else. I'll tell you what, if, if, he's predicting, if, if he's predicting no snow tomorrow and it snows... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting. I tell you what. If I, from the, from the way things are going, I think if he's predicting no snow tomorrow, I'm I'm putting out the the salt on the driveway in the morning. That's all I can say. And that's my rant for tonight. By the way, radios, weather radios, rather than watch WSOC TV or watch the t- the news, uh, weather men on TV or weather people on TV. Uh, because uh, sometimes it seems to be they completely wrong. Keep really, really keep up to date with the weather. What's going on with the weather? Get yourself a weather radio. That's why we have weather radio. We had um, we have a weather radio. This is a Midland. This is an ER three ten, and we sell these at Byte Two Wear Radios. And just full disclosure, I work for Byte Two Wear Radios. I am the product manager, but my boss, the owner, has uh, authorized me to offer the promo code Wine Show. That's Wine Show to get an initial five percent off if you make a purchase on the uh, uh, on a weather radio or any any radio. It, it could be any any radio at all. And uh, let's see, I've got uh, anyway the. Uh, this is a great little item. Everybody needs to have a weather radio. I don't go by everything the weather the the weatherman says on TV. I mean, they're forecasting. Sometimes the forecast is is on the money. Sometimes it's a little off. Sometimes it's completely wrong. Like what happened the last two weeks. If you really want to stay on top, get a weather radio so you can get up to the minute weather alerts on your weather radio. Uh, wherever you are, any time, and you know that's going to be accurate. As a matter of fact. Uh, we have one downstairs. We have a weather radio on the wall that went off several times 
uh, early uh, late last week because of the tornadoes we had in the area. We had some really big storms roll through uh, this past week, and uh, some four tornadoes. I think a few EF ones and one EF two tornado. One of them cut through pine uh, through the area near where we live. Didn't hit us, but it went and, and hit uh, uh, hit Matthews over there, and uh, down a lot of trees, power lines, uh, caused a lot of problems. And um, some of these people were saying that they, they only had seconds seconds of warning before they to get cover. Uh, I think some people were saying they had less than thirty seconds. Uh, if, uh, with any warning before, you know, to get cover before the tornado hit them. So, uh, it, it, once again, these things can really, really be lifesavers. They can save your life. You know, you get a tornado warning. Ours went off several times for the tornado warnings. So, uh, my family, I was at work, but my family was at home and they were aware of it. So, they were alerted to it and, uh, uh, you know, they, so they could be ready in case something happened. But uh, you can't. You can't. You need to have weather radio. You you really do. Anyway, uh, weather radios. We go use uh, the promo code Wine Show. Go to buy two way radios dot com. Go to buy two way radios dot com. Get a weather radio. Get a five percent discount with the promo code. Um, and uh, look, whether you get a radio from buy two way radios or anywhere else, just get a weather radio. It it. It'll save your life. You know, one of these days, I think what we're going to do. I, I gave one. I think I gave one away. We gave one away uh, for the holidays on the wine stream. We might give another one away uh, pretty soon because I think it's important that everybody have one. I, I really think it is. Anyway, so uh, before we close, we're going to close a little early tonight. Before we do, I want to address some uh, feedback that I got um, from YouTube. And I do get feedback from time to time, and I welcome your feedback. Look, you can send your feedback. Always send, you know, send your feedback to rickettsavoymedia.com. It's rickettsavoymedia. And um, it good, bad, and different, whatever. Um, I'll respond on behalf. Um, I really want to know what you what you think and what's on your mind, and, and whether you're not enjoying the show, or if you have any suggestions for how you want to change the show. Uh, just just send it to rickettsavoymedia.com. YouTube, you can leave the comments in the YouTube channel and, of course, in, in Facebook and in the Facebook page and on Twitter. Speaking of which, uh, let's see, anything going on on Twitter? Let's see, we've got uh, Tommy. Uh, yeah, Tommy liked my tweet. <laughs> Thanks, son. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know what happened to Twitch tonight, folks. I'm really, uh, the folks watching Twitch, and we had a couple of people watching Twitch, uh, I don't know what happened with that that feed. I really don't. Something something went off with it. We'll have to I'll have to investigate to find out what happened. Uh, for the rest of us, uh, there is one other thing that um, I want to uh, cover, and that is the YouTube comment, of course. All right, so I got a YouTube comment earlier. Uh, oh, it was actually just yesterday, I believe. No, I think it was this morning actually. And this is from uh, Jacob. Jacob was watching one of my videos. It, actually, last week's videos from the, the live stream video. He was watching it after the fact, it looks like, uh, on YouTube. And, of course, when it's done, I just leave them up on YouTube. They're, they're you know, for archival purposes. Anybody who wants to watch the stream later can go by and check it out on YouTube, just like they can on Facebook. And um, he sent me a... Uh, he left a comment, and his comment was... Hey, Rick, just some constructive criticism here, bud. You need to shorten these videos way down. Pick out the best bits and shorten it into a, 15, uh, into a 10 to 15 minute video. Because I'll be honest, nobody will watch your videos if they're current. Nobody will watch your videos in their current state. Also, try putting some color into the backdrop, buddy, because this is just depressing, Rick. If you locked off the streaming and shortened your videos, then you could have a nice little YouTube channel with a nice little fan base. Anyway, try not to drink yourself to death. I'm a bounce. Safe. And uh, that's from Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, I appreciate your, your comments. Uh, I really do. I, uh, I want to say that... Uh, is it uh, is Jacob here? Let me see the, yeah. 
So uh, let me let me respond to that comment a little bit. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for the comment. Second, uh, I, I want to address everything point by point. Constructive criticism, and I do appreciate that. You need to shorten the videos way down. Well, um, it's a stream, and it's extremely conscious kind of show. This is the kind of show that I do. Uh, pick out the best bits and shorten it into a 10 to 15 minute video because I'll be honest, nobody will watch your videos in the current state. Uh, also try putting some color into the backdrop, buddy, because this is just depressing, Rick. Now, let, let's talk about that first. Uh, the backdrop, the color of the backdrop, it's blue. It's There's a little bit of stark contrast going on here, a little bit. But um, I don't find, does anybody else find this uh, depressing? Does anybody find the, the color choice depressing? If you, if you do, if you do, let me know. Put it in the chat. Let me know. I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. Um, <laughs> there's a reason that it's blue. There are a couple of reasons why it's blue. One is because this is a supposed to be a laid back Saturday night show, and uh, I didn't want to make the whole thing black or something. You know, do the the uh, the old Tom Snyder uh, thing, with a, you know, just a overhead spot on me and, and everything else black. I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to have some, and there is some color in the background. We have a lot of wine bottles with some colorful colorful labels. I don't think it's colorless. You? I, don't, I think it's fairly colorful. But I do see your point that, that there is a little bit of stark contrast here, but uh, does it depressing? There are two reasons for the blue background. One reason is because is to keep uh, everything aesthetically in line with everything else I'm doing up here. There are only so many colors in the palette that I could put back there that would be uh, aesthetically uh, that, that would match up aesthetically with everything else I'm doing back there and forward. And blue was uh, uh, a very a logical choice. Second, there is um, the with the blue. The blue is this is supposed to be a calm, fun, laid back, relaxed kind of atmosphere, and the color blue is known to be to have a calming effect on people. You know, as opposed to red or or, or green or something, a, a bright you know bright colors that that really are uh, kind of get people excited. That's not really what the purpose of, of this wine stream is is to relax enjoy some wine kick back and just just chill out just chill out and be cool right so hence the color blue it's supposed to have a calming effect and be just kind of cool subdued color the third reason for that blue background is because from time to time I may decide to uh, do some chroma key and uh, put in throw something else back up there and when it comes to uh, to chroma key effects blue and green are going to be the most uh, the really the go-to colors green a little more so than blue on video because with uh, with green uh, it tends to not uh, take out as much of the flesh tones for people in front it's it's a little bit more complimentary for uh, for, for chroma key with with uh, flesh tones than blue but um, the green I did not want a green background it just you know if I was gonna have a green screen or something behind I did not want a green background it just it, it, too obvious for one thing the other thing is that green didn't really mesh up with everything else I was doing with the wine and things like that the wine bottles and, and everything else so that's why I chose blue because I can still chroma key that uh, it's it's more of a chroma blue. I can chroma key that, and I have done that uh, in in testing, um, and I'll probably do some more of that live later on. But it's it's there for for chroma key effect as well as being a calming effect. So it was a logical choice for me to choose blue, and I want to bring that up. Not, I'm not making excuse for anything. I'm not uh, being. Uh, in fact, I'm not being. Uh, uh, you know, like I say, I appreciate the criticisms, constructive criticism, to be, to be uh, sure. I am not being defensive about this in any way. I'm just telling you fact by fact. That's why it's there. Um, and without uh, being defensive, fact by fact, is that uh, even though I'm 
doing this, yeah, the stream goes on and it's an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes it's been as long as two hours, and that's even long for me. But um, that's not the the purpose of, of this this wine stream, really, because what it comes down to is um, this is a streaming, primarily a streaming show and an audio podcast. So it's not really there to be a short instructional or tutorial video. Now, I have done, um, I don't know where I put it all though, but um, there it is. No, that's not it. Oh, yes. I do some tutorial videos. I do uh, quite a few videos. I've been a podcaster and a YouTuber for, uh, for a long time. Uh, I've been a podcaster for almost 14 years now. And uh, I've been a YouTuber, and I'm paid to do this. Okay, I do this professionally. It's part of my day job. I, I, I do content. I'm a content creator. It's part of my day job. This is on the Bite to Way Radio site. I'm showing you this because that's an example of one of the videos that uh, that I do. I do instructional videos as well as other types of product videos and tutorials, things like that. I just finished this one uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's only about it's less than two minutes long. This is less. This is a, a video that's less than two minutes. And um, so I, I know I know about length on videos. Okay, ten to fifteen minute videos. Yeah, I've done some short videos, ten to fifteen minutes, and it depends on what's called for. And for a YouTube channel, if I was doing an instructional video and saying, "Oh, here's a quick wine review," and I'm just doing a few instructional things. Yeah, I would make this a lot shorter if it was a straight out video. And it would be 10, 15 minutes or less. Okay? Uh, no problem with that. I certainly understand that. And uh, I've done a lot of videos. A lot of videos. Uh, a lot of videos in YouTube that, uh, that I uh, shoot, produce. And then I've been on both ends of the camera. On uh, Half of them I'm on both ends of the camera. And then the other half I, I shoot with, with uh, the owners, with my boss. And some of those are two or three minutes less sometimes. It depends on the video. It just, uh, you, you, you're the right length for the right video in the right circumstances. Got it. Got it. I know that very well. So you're speaking to the choir here, there, Jacob. Uh, you're speaking to the choir on that. But this isn't that kind of a video. Uh, it says, uh, if you lock off the streaming and shorten your videos, and you can have a nice little YouTube channel with a nice little fan base. Uh, okay, well, you know what, though? That's not the aim of this show. The primary aim of the show, the videos are up there for archival purposes, but the primary aim of the show is the stream. <laughs> that is the primary purpose of this show, is the Saturday Night Stream, the live stream. And with the live stream, it's going to be an hour, an hour and a half long sometimes longer. That's just the nature of a lot of the live streaming for this kind of event. And of course this, once again, this is a laid back kind of show. I am not, uh, if I was doing this, say, and getting paid for it, yeah, I would, I would strict, you know, if I was, if there were some parameters there, I'd keep it down to a strict hour. We're going to talk about that. I might be cutting this down to about an hour uh, from, uh, from this point on. But, uh, you know, if I, now if I was getting paid to do this, it would be a different story. But that's not what's happening here. This is a, a different kind of podcast. This is a different kind of, of stream where I'm just having fun. This is me on Saturday night kicking back with you and the two, the, you know, and us just sitting around having a good time. That's it. There's no real agenda there other than just enjoying ourselves, enjoying each other's company. And having a good wine. So for that reason, um, <laughs> you know that that's that's why they are as long as they are. They're as long as as I want them to be, as long as we want them to be. And uh, if everyone, if anyone else has any feedback, you agree with them. If you think that they should be a lot shorter, I personally I think they should be a little bit shorter. My wife uh, thinks that they should. I'm going to try and keep them. I, I think after tonight, I'm pro probably going to try and keep them around an hour to to maybe uh, an hour and, and ten minutes long. Uh, we'll probably keep them around to 60, 70 minutes. But um, 
you know, it depends on what what uh, what it calls for that particular night. Anyway, I do appreciate your feedback, but uh, I, you know, I there is a but there. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, uh, you know, Tommy saw this comment and he thought it was, he thought it was being rather condescending because he kept calling me bud and buddy and stuff like that. And he, he, and you know, and sometimes it can be considered a condescending tone. Sometimes I use bud when I'm talking to a friend of mine just for, just a term of endearment. But, um, of course, I don't know him and he doesn't know me, so I I, I don't know. But Tommy took the, his whole um comment is is rather condescending i don't know i'm not going to judge other people for that and was he trolling i don't know that either and i don't really care <laughs> i really don't um that, that's that sort of thing doesn't really bother me because this is just something i'm doing for fun look when i when this stops becoming fun when this stops being fun i'm going to stop doing it in the story but until then it's you and me and this wine and we're we're having a good time and uh, that's that's what that's all there is to it. With that, I think we're going to close tonight. Uh, this is uh, just to to recap what we're what we've been drinking. Uh, this is a let me get it back up here. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon 2018 a Mazette de la Palom Palombière. It is a French wine. It is uh, quite a bit. Is a quite a bit tannic. It's sweet on the tongue, but it goes down rather rather uh, uh, dry, and um, it's uh, it's kind of fruity. Black cherry. Uh, people were saying blackberry and stuff like that. I didn't really get the blackberry notes in there too much, but definitely the black cherry. There were some. Uh, it was kind of smoky for me. Uh, it was a little bit uh, little oakiness. Uh, a little leatherly, uh, leather, leathery, leatherly, leathery. Um, other than that, it, it was a pretty, it was kind of silky smooth and it especially paired well. It's especially paired well with the uh, steak. Uh, it was okay with the chicken. We tried it with the, the, the T-bone steak. It was good with the steak. Okay with the chicken. The, uh, cheeses, I, you know, I never did try it with the, the, uh, mozzarella, but um, as always, it was good with the Gouda. Haven't lost one with the Gouda uh, from Trader Joe's yet. It was really good with the uh, uh, Kobe Jack cheese. It, it really brought out the, the um, uh, uh, for some reason, it brought out a few of the flavors with the wine, uh, with that cheese. I, I really liked that. And it went pretty well with the smoked uh, cheddar, which I, I was not surprised. There is one thing I did not try it with that I did promise that I would, and that is the cookies. Cheese made these uh, chocolate chip cookies for me tonight, for us. I grabbed a couple really, really big cookies, uh, huge cookies. I'm going to try one with it now. At the risk of overdoing all the sweet stuff. Mm. Whoa, boy. Got to do that again. Oh, man, I'm going to feel this in the morning. Mm. Trying again. Another piece of cookie. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good. Good with chocolate chip cookie. I was not surprised about that either, but it was nice. I was looking forward to that. I'm glad we didn't miss that. Uh, I, I will say that uh, it's it's worth it for the uh, price. It's definitely I th I wouldn't say this a twenty dollar bottle of wine, fifteen sixteen dollars a bottle. I, I would say it's pretty good, and I paid what twelve ninety nine for this at winestore-online.com. Um, pretty pretty decent buy at twelve ninety nine. It's not it's pretty decent uh, cap for that. I would say yeah, worth it, worth the money. So I give this a thumbs up. Give it, give it two thumbs up. Anyway, it's time to close up the stream now. I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. I'm really, I want. First of all, I want to apologize uh, to uh, Ani off on Twitch and uh, anyone else watching on Twitch. I don't know. It says the video download was canceled. Please try again. I don't know what happened there, and I, uh, I really have no idea. They lost the lost the stream on that for some reason. 
But we're up everywhere else. I'm, no, on Periscope, we're still good there. And, uh, yeah, I'm showing up on Twitter. So you can tweet me there, and, and, and I'll get that. And uh, YouTube has been, yeah, it's been pretty solid on YouTube all night. Usually, you know, YouTube I have very few, if any, problems with. Uh, Facebook, it'll go up and down, and it was going up and down a little bit tonight on Facebook. Hopefully, we didn't really lose anything. Maybe it was just whatever was coming back to me. But um, that was fairly stable. Anyway, I want to thank uh, Chris, who liked it, and uh, Kathy, Mark Miller, uh, for joining uh, me on the stream. And Frosty, of course. Frosty, please uh, give me your address. Uh, email me your address so I can send you out your T-shirt and everything. Uh, my lovely wife, Chi. And Rob, it's good to see you. It's always good to see you, Rob. You're regular in the chat, and I want to thank you for being here. And uh, let's see, Phil. Uh, Phil, thank you for joining the chat. Phil's another regular, and uh, I really appreciate you. And also get me your your uh, mailing address so I can get your um, your gifts out to you. Your, it, that was the... Uh, the calendar, the National Day Calendar. You'll have a lot of fun with that, Phil. I know because you you like the the dad jokes and the puns like I do. You you'll enjoy the National Day Calendar. You really will. Uh, trust me, it's 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 worth it. Anyway, especially for free, right? And you can't be free. <laughs> so, anyway, I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. And uh, once again, I want to apologize to to Oni OTF. Uh, we'll I'll try to get that fixed for next week. But I appreciate your being there. Um, everyone, as always, as you know, it's time to cap this bottle. And this is a gift from, it won't work. See, because the, the, it's not this. It's the mouth of the bottle. It's just too wide. But uh, this was a gift given to me over the holidays by my good friends, um, Tom and Nancy Fenton. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me on the chat. I want to thank you for being here. Please, please, please do not drink and drive. Drink responsibly in the comfort of your own home, apartment, uh, studio place, uh, uh, wherever you're sleeping tonight, uh, hotel, whatever. Just drink responsibly and do not overdo it. Please do not drink and drive. Call an Uber or Lyft or something you have to, but just do not do it. Have a designated driver. Um, just, just don't do it, please. And please do not text and drive. I saw another incident of, driving the, of, of, of someone looking at their cell phone and not paying attention to what they're doing. It was just, it, uh, it, it was not, not good. Anyway, I want uh, everyone to have a good week, and I want everybody to have a safe week. Have a great week and a safe week. Take care of yourselves, yourself this week, so you can join me here again next week. Same time, same channel, so we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.